All right, y'all. So here's my session that I did yesterday. I'm going to finish workout now. Um, after this, just going to confirm and review next day. I'm about to go train legs. Um, first thing first, I'm going to be doing back raises, glute ham, the leg press. This is week one, day one, and then a barbell camber squat. After that, I'm going to do a walking lunge with the glute focus. Basically, that just means long strides. So this is my session. This is what you guys are seeing. Um, basically, the reason for the back raise, centering the body weight, is because it's obviously it's a body weight exercise. So uh, I woke up this morning at 219.2, actually. So I'll put 219, save. That's going to do progressions for the future, which is pretty cool. Um, Having me start there with one set, I might add a set, we'll see, which is as easy as clicking on those three dots and hitting add set. So I wanted you all to see this. This is how I uh, start my sessions. I basically open, view, see what I'm about to do, get my, get my head right, and go into it. Um, as far as where I'm at, I just finished the uh, Charlotte Pro. It was fun. My friend Conan convinced me to hop in. I had a great time. Uh, my wellness pro did really well. 135 Masters. One. Um, yeah, so she won that and then she uh, competed in Open. Got seventh, I think. Pretty damn good. Um, stood next to a few Olympians. Looked amazing. As, f as far as where I was, I think I was like 13th or 14th or some shit. But again, you know, it wasn't my show. Um, I just wanted to hop in. I had a fantastic time, met a bunch of amazing people. The guy that actually won his Instagram handle is Black Rambo. Uh, we became really good friends. He's going to come to Vegas soon. We're going to hang out. Maybe I'll let him stay here and uh, we'll, we'll get some filming done when he comes into town too. You guys will really enjoy that. He's in amazing shape. Uh, really hard worker, amazing online coach. So go give him a follow and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm ready to go get this. This leg session, it is the Wednesday after the show, so three days post con or four days post contest. Feeling pretty good to train legs now. You're gonna notice I'm gonna start pretty light on everything. Uh, this is gonna be more of a vlog style filming uh, workout. Brad's not available today, so the training might just be like you know stereotypical. Ooh, here's some fucking music to put over it. But as far as everything else goes. Um, I'll just do this vlog style today. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully I can say something meaningful, something productive, maybe some informational stuff. And if I end up uh, voicing over the training as well, maybe you guys let me know if you like that too. So, gonna go get this shit started. I'm excited. I will see you all at the gym. What's up everybody? So. Here I am basically just doing a little warm up. Um, I don't do much specific warm up. Um, basically getting right into the exercises uh, after I do a bit of a dynamic warm up here. I'll do some leg swings, I'll kind of do some arm swings, uh, wrist, a little bit of wrist mobility work, um, and then just like some good mornings to get the hamstrings going, like body weight good mornings, which you'll see coming up. This is really all I do for a warm-up though. Um, then I get right to the specific warm-up, which literally means, like I said, the warm-up for the exercise itself. I did a little bit more of this. I did like three or four rounds of this before I decided, oh, I should probably record this. So I basically did my last one here, adjusted the machine to the settings I liked, wrote that down in the app, made sure that I was uh, putting the correct notches down and I kind of just started warming up so you're gonna see here with this specific warm-up I'm actually kind of letting my body fall slowly while using those handles it's basically like using assistance I'm not really doing a full range of motion well it, it's not that I'm not doing a full range of motion but I'm not using the machine properly clearly I'm not lowering it like that which is what I then go into then I push myself up, so it makes the uh, contraction a little easier, that portion of the lift a little easier. And then you're gonna see in this next clip, basically I grab a PVC pipe and I 
use that as a stabilization, um, just kind of a modality. Like I'm not trying to use that to come up. So you're gonna notice on these last couple, I'm kind of pushing myself off of it. But then when I get into my working sets, I actually am just kind of holding it there and not using it as any sort of leverage. Now I think this is actually the last warm up set. So on this one I'm doing the, this is my potentiation set basically. So I'm doing this how I would do it with my exercises. I'm not actually using that PVC pipe to, to come up. I am just making sure that I'm getting a couple of reps to potentiate myself because my body weight's pretty damn heavy, obviously. So these are gonna be harder than somebody who weighs like 100 pounds. And if somebody who weighs 100 pounds can hold a 25 pound plate instead of using that PVC pipe for the stabilization, um, maybe they can do that. So that's how you add weight. You just hold the plate in front of your hand. So here I am, first set of the day, first working set. And I am making sure that, again, I'm not pushing off of that PVC pipe. So I'm gonna let this go through a couple working sets. Um, I'll be back to talk more about what I'm doing, why, how, and then you'll even see a little bit of the app, how I program this, what it looks like, etc. Here I am basically showing you that I added a set to the uh, back raise and then I put my reps completed. Now it's asking me my biofeedback, it asked me joint pain, it asked me if my pump, and it asked me uh, how the worker load rating was. Now I know that I'm going into my leg press next. I, my planned working weight, because I'm gonna go in the 10 to 15 rep range for the day is 495. I go, I select 495. It's having me do two reps in the tank on every set, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now this little trick here is just the uh, back pad trick. I use a um, ab mat and a regular foam mat. Um, then I went and I sat on it and messed it up to put my squat shoes on because I forgot I didn't have them on. But basically that, that can push your hips closer to the uh, pl foot platform. And what this can do, and I talked about this in that video with Nick Walker, um, I'm all over the place on the internet, but increase the range of motion by creating more knee flexion while preventing your lower back from rounding a ton. Uh, you still get a little bit of lower back rounding, but because those pads are there, it actually keeps your back more in a neutral position, which is awesome. That's what you want. Um, with this, you really eliminate any sort of lower back pain, injuries, etc. Now I'm going into my warm-ups. You're gonna see I start with 225. Um, but this is really just me going through that same process of um, warming up that you always see me do. I'll do a few reps with, you know, let's say 30%, go up to 50, go up to 70, go up to uh, 90, go up to 100 or 105% and do my last set, which is a potentiation set. Um, you guys have seen this warm-up sequence before, but I just kind of wanted to go ahead and show you a full warm-up sequence for the quads. Since I shifted my muscle groups from hamstrings to quads, I went ahead and included the warm-up in both the hamstring and now the quad. And you'll see when I go into camber to camber bar squats, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be going right into my working sets. Uh, I do like 225 once, then I go to 275, I hit my working sets because my quads are already very warmed up, they're very used to load, and uh, really it's just um, getting used to that new movement. So here's the potentiation set. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flash the card on screen with what I did here. You're gonna see it right now. Here it is. <laughs> You'll see I did 495 for 12 
and then 11. This is set one. Notice um, the lower back pad moved there a little bit. I had to push it down with my with my hips as I got to the top of that rep. Don't do that shit. Um, it's just not very heavy for me. I'm currently in contest prep. This is actually a very light weight for me. Um, but I am cooked, and this got heavy quick. Like I said, I only got 12, 11, usually 495. I'm, I'm getting quite a bit more than that. But um, I was just making sure to really control each rep, really making sure that the uh, eccentric is slow, opening the hips. My toes are actually pointed out, as you'll see, and you saw in the warm-ups. I open the hips. My knees go in, the, in line with my toes. This allows me to push my, open my hips past my rib cage and get a ton of knee flexion, which is awesome. That's what you want. So that was set one. With set two, you're gonna see it again. Go ahead and push that back pad down, push my hips closer to the platform. Boom, boom. Toes are pointed out. You're gonna notice I open the hips as I bring my knees down toward the rib cage. So Boom, hips are open. I'm corkscrewing my feet into the ground or into the platform. And then I am opening the hips in that direction. Now, something I'm gonna talk about on this set is the lockouts. You'll see here, it's kind of like soft lockouts for me, but then I begin locking it out. You can do either or. Lockouts are totally safe. You're gonna see on this rep, this is gonna freak. This one's gonna fucking like get a bunch of comments. I, I'm, I'm sure. Right here, I think. So, so, that motion seems to scare people. But if you have healthy joints, you're not hyper mobile in the joints, like your knee is known for like kind of going well beyond what it should, then this is completely safe to do. You don't, that doesn't mean I'm telling you to do it. You don't have to at all. Uh, but just know it is safe, it's okay. And you can if you have healthy joints and they're not hyper mobile. Feel free to just do soft lockouts like I was doing in the beginning or feel free to do this. I wanted to show the difference. Next, I'm gonna show you guys one of the most important things about all this. So that was just me being a smart ass because what I'm gonna show you guys is if you can put the plates on guys, take them off. Did I have a quad pump out of this world? Absolutely. Did I still walk my happy ass back over there after about five minutes laying on the ground? Absolutely. I'm gonna rack my weights. So that was just me being funny. But <laughs> moving into my next exercise, like I said, you're gonna notice I did not do um, a crazy warm up. I did 225 for a couple. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to 275. Did a single, potentiated with it. I was like, all right, cool. This feels good for the day. Actually, I don't think I potentiated it. I think I got 275 on my back. I was like, this feels good. Let's get into the sets. And I was going for the 7 to 10 range. I think I got 8 6, which is okay. It's 2 in the tank. So next week I'll probably get 9 7. Or there will be an added set. We'll see what the algorithm does based on my biofeedback. Um, I had a crazy quad pump. I made sure to put that into the app. Um, and then, yeah, I had a really good time with these. This is my first time back squatting, so you'll notice on that second rep, I actually like rocked back on my heels a little bit, which I don't normally do. Um, it's my very first time back squatting in a long fucking time. I wanted to do some slower eccentric cambered bar squats, so I decided to. After my leg press, I should have enough energy to keep doing this through the mesocycle, but if not, I'm gonna show you guys how I actually go in and modify exercises when they're changed. Um, but yeah, this is. A, I'm glad I got to record this set session for you guys because um, it's tough to know what to do with your leg training between shows. Um, and this hopefully shows you, okay, let's go in, let's get the work done, do a couple sets of leg press, a couple sets of squats, Maybe some hamstring curls or whatever. I, I did back. I did back extension slash glute ham raises, um, and they worked amazing. And my quads are currently in my office chair cramping because uh, that volume was sufficient. And this this novel exercise, the camber bar back squat, really fucked my quads up, which was amazing. Um, that's one thing I tend to do is input some novelty in between shows, especially if you have about three four weeks between them because that's going to help you with muscle retention. You wanna make sure you're doing those in sequence though, you want some directed adaptation as well. So I'm gonna stick with these variations the entire mesocycle. Otherwise, you're just hopping all over the place, you delay the direct adaptation and you actually get worse results. So if I can stick with these for the whole mesocycle, that's best. But if I have to modify anything due to new gyms, etc., I will have to do that. Like I'm going to Missouri um, for my client Dylan's show. 
I'm sure they'll have a camera bar, but if not, I'll have to do something else, right? So I'll let you guys know if I do, and I'll bring myself along. These are walking lunges. You're going to notice, I really want to point this out. I'm coming up on my front leg without pushing off my back leg a shitload. This is the heaviest I have lunge in a long time. Um, but I, it's because I wanted to show you guys. I am strong as shit. I could probably quote unquote lunge 225, right? But I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm lunging 135 and trying to pistol squat that shit up while keeping a big chest. So you're coming up on the front leg only. Front leg only. What I'm doing here is literally just replaying that set so you guys can see what I mean. I lunge, I push my chest up, I lift that bag leg up as soon as I can. I'm pushing off a little bit, but I'm making sure each rep I'm coming up on that front leg. You really want to emphasize the front leg in this. You want to make sure you're still stable, of course, so push off as much as you need to. But if you're just using that back leg to really fucking force yourself off the ground, you're not doing lunges properly, especially if you want to grow big ass glutes. Females, big long stride. Do not force that. Don't fucking Nike sprint like you have sprinting blocks off the back leg. You're trying to keep a big chest and use the glute on the way up. Uh, I hope this was good, guys. Um, next scene is me just kind of chit-chatting, telling you guys how everything went. But let me know if you like this, please. Uh, that was it. One set of lunges is going to cook my glutes for the next fucking, who knows, week and a half. <laughs> so peace out, guys. I'll see you in the next slide. All right, what's up, everybody? So I just got done training. Generally, I go and I get food right away. Um, that's the best thing to do. You just stimulated a certain pathway called mTOR. I'm trying to make this educational for you guys. So when you train with weights, stimulate the pathways for growth. Going and doing cardio is not a good idea. Prolonging food, not a good idea. There are certain things that occur after really big hard training. Like, you know, I'm not ready to eat yet after that hard leg session. I'm pretty, you know, pretty nauseous. Uh, I don't think I can keep the food in currently. So I'm gonna get my 15 minutes of getting food um, from Walmart. I have to restock a little bit. Getting some food, um, going home, make my food. I live right next to Walmart, so. I'm only really pro prolonging the eating by about 20 minutes, and I think that's about that's pretty fine. Um, but again, you know, most of the time, right when I'm done training, I finish drinking my Intra Shake, I pound the rest of it because there you go, there's some nutrients. I get home, I make my meal, and I'm good to go. Um, I am about to eat my fuck. It's gonna be my first meal of the day since I decided to train first thing this morning. But that leg session, amazing. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to try to do some voiceover stuff, so you'll see that first anyway. But I'm going to do voiceover stuff for the, uh, probably for the training vlogs where I'm like recording myself because it's very boring. I'm going to put cards on the screen of what I did, and I'll just talk about what's going on, maybe through my head, why I'm doing things the way I'm doing, uh, maybe even critiquing my own technique. Like, man, that wasn't deep enough. Um, so hopefully that's going to be cool, cool little insights for you guys. I'm trying to do, you know, educational I'll do educational content, like maybe even some like a uh, pop-ups and shit on the screen. I'm gonna do uh, training vlogs. I'm gonna do day in the life vlogs. Hopefully I have one of those on hand already. And then these training more training style vlogs, lifestyle vlogs, I don't know what I'll call them. And then I'm gonna do training people. So you guys let me know who you wanna see on the videos. Uh, there's a bunch of people on the channel, on the RP YouTube channel that have been out. So I'll get them on here too. Tristan Lee's gonna come to town. We might get some content together. Um, I'm gonna be coaching him for a bit, but we'll see what happens. I'm excited. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I feel really freaking good for being three weeks out. Um, I feel like I look good. I feel like I'm already 219.2, lowest weigh in a prep, besides the weigh ins at, at the show, obviously, where I had to be 215 and sauna the fuck out of myself. <laughs> that was rough. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It might be shorter. We'll see. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good shit for the YouTubes. And let me know what you want to see, what I should talk about, if the educational stuff sounds like a good idea. If anything sounds like a dumb idea, like, feel free, man. I love criticism, critique me. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Let's uh, go get this Walmart shit done.